Welcome back to Exceptional Talk with Dr. Clark. As I promised, I have this very, very special lady here with you. Her name is Ms. Jessica Doss. When I tell you guys, she has such a wealth of knowledge. You must really ask all the questions you want to ask about special education. This is the time. All right. So uh, without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce to you Ms. Jessica Doss. Hi, Ms. Doss. How are you doing? I am well. Hi, Dr. Clark. I'm doing well this evening. How are you? I am great. I'm great. Thank you for asking. I'll tell you, I'm very, very excited. Uh, when I knew I was going to have this opportunity to interview you, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get this. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Doss, so please, I know I have expressed uh, some of the things that uh, about you that I've told the viewers already. But I'm just going to give you this opportunity to kind of say a little bit about yourself uh, and kind of expound on some of the things that you want them to know about you. Okay, well, uh, I'll, just, I'll be brief, you know, a little bit just uh, on the introduction of myself, but it is true. I have a great passion for education, all things education. I, I am an education major. I didn't start out uh, in education as initially going to college, but I've always love educating. My mom would always laugh and talk about how I would talk to my dolls in the room and make them do math problems and things like that. <laughs> uh, and, and even growing up, I had different jobs related to tutorial services and things. Like that. So I've always had a passion for it. I moved into Georgia because I'm a native of Mississippi. Uh, there was some certification loops. So when I first started in Georgia, I was actually teaching secondary science, biology, love science, and my first classroom, uh, I had a co-teaching class. And this was new for me because in my mind, uh, coming up, special education was more of your CIP babies and low incident students. But I had kids with learning disabilities in my classroom. And uh, they would often call me the child whisperer because they oh, would, uh, wow. it was kind of like, uh, they were saying, you know, send them the dolls, you know, she can, you know, talk to them and work with them. But I, I had a profound interest in working with these students. Long story short, uh, there was a certification issue uh, with me getting clear renewed for my science certificate. But at the time, my principal told me, you know what, Ms. Doss, you you such a phenomenal job. As a matter of fact, I earned the Coca-Cola Thirst for Knowledge Award that particular year. And he awesome. said, you know, we'll get it situated and you will, you know, you, you'll, you'll get it together and you'll still be here. So in the midst of that, my co-teacher said, you know what, Doss, you should try you know, special ed, take the special education assessment. So I took it, passed it, and after I passed it, my other certification was no problem. So it's kind of like it found me. It was kind of like, you know, I had a loophole mm -hmm. where I couldn't get past uh, one point and didn't understand why, but it was all because of the purpose of me taking special the special education test and becoming a special educator. And so well, that's why. Uh, well, it sounds like from what you're saying, and I, I believe it or not, it's like you were on that path already from a little girl. And I was, but definitely not special ed. You know, I, you know, I, even when I said, okay, I'll do education, it still wasn't enough because believe it or not, as I was doing uh, general education, I was still seeking something different. It wasn't, enough, it wasn't quite enough. So I, I was actually looking into working for DFACS, wanting the whole child, basically, mm -hmm. loving to work with kids, but wanting more than just the surface of giving them curriculum, if that makes sense. It does. Uh, so, um, you know, still looking for something else. And, and to be quite honest, special ed does it. It gives you the opportunity to, to work with the whole child because yes. there's so many things you have to focus on outside of the curriculum because there are so many things that have to be uh, attended to first before you're even able to tap into that aspect of them. So, you know, it, it kind of found me. And even beyond that, the greatest parts of that is I transitioned to that and now I'm a mommy of a seven-year-old uh, with autism. So it's kind of like- my baby, everyone. I, I, that is, <laughs> she is mine. <laughs> absolutely. So it's, you know, I've had a journey with it and I absolutely love it. And uh, I do believe, you know, some people ask the question and I'll say this and then we can, you know, definitely move on, you know, why certain things happen certain ways. And I'm, I have begun to understand is it's because you're, you're put there to make a difference. So I understand that, you know, you know things have happened to put me on a path, not just for myself, but to educate others about my experiences and to better equip them and become knowledgeable when they face certain tasks. Most definitely, because one thing I could definitely say, when you are having those experiences for yourself, 
you're better able to tell a parent who's out there struggling, don't know what to do. I mean, just like you said, you were a new mommy with a new baby and, mm -hmm. and there are challenges, but he had already begun to prepare you. And that's the thing we often don't know when God is doing things for us already, he's ordering our steps. And Absolutely. when he does that and you get to a point in your life and you, you look back and you say, that's why mm -hmm. I did that. That's Absolutely. why this person came into my life. That's mm -hmm. why I, you know, I went into that particular uh, opportunity. So it sounds great. So I tell you, not only are you a special educator, but you are a leader. And with that being said, just tell us a little bit um, about how you would have done maybe your career differently. I know you said this wasn't the path that you were going on, but now that you are here, right. do you regret any of it or maybe you wish you had done something differently? Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily regret uh, uh, doing something differently. I will say, uh, knowing what I know now in the, in the capacity in which I do lead, I probably would have, um, you know, taken more uh, courses or even an interest as far as my major, uh, focusing on uh, something more relative to special education, because I, I live and breathe it. I mean, I love it. I, it's one of those, honestly, you know, we, we joke about it all the time, you know, about the work and the capacity. Yes. It's hard. It's not easy work. It's, it's very, not, very not. hard. But it's honestly one of those things that, you know, they could, they could call me right now and I could win a million bucks and I would still be at work tomorrow. Yes, because I absolutely really love what would. I do. So not necessarily changing anything, because to be honest with you, again, when I talk about, you know, I always had ambitions of, you know, wanting to do more and about, you know, the totality of, of people. Mm -hmm. uh, even in the sector that I'm in now, because actually my master's and my uh, doctoral uh, specializes in human services, because I want to do, you know, holistically for the community and for people, even with the students with disabilities, it, it shouldn't stop past 12th grade. Right. So once right. they graduate, you know, we always speak and depending upon their, their ability level and what they may uh, transition to or what they may aspire to do. Um, some of them may not need the services anymore and they've learned, you know, we, and, and they've mastered certain things. They no longer need the support, but unfortunately a lot of them still do. And, and it stops a lot of times. So the human service aspects of that gives me, uh, I'm, I'm believing mm -hmm. uh, in the future, a different vantage point to have services for people who still require them, but of course not in the public setting, you know, or even in private as it goes for education at that point. So right. it, and it sounds, it sounds like that's that's the gap that that needs to be closed you know because once they they graduate and they get out there in the real world oftentimes they don't know where else to go you know exactly. so it, it's exactly. to have somewhere to go and to know that they're going to be cared for and all of their needs met that is going to be awesome um, well we're going to stop here for part okay. one all right Please, I know that there's so much more. Guys, just hold on. We'll be right back with Exceptional Talk with Dr. Clark.